Serba Dynamic Holdings announced that KPMG has resigned as its external auditor with immediate effect. The audit firm served Serba Dynamic the written notice on June 23rd. In a boss filing, KPMG highlights the suit filed by the group on June 22nd against it in regard to the ongoing statutory audit of the company for financial year ending June 30th, 2021. KPMG says the suit compromised its ability to independently continue the audit engagement and discharge its professional duties as the company's auditor. Serbidynamic says it is currently identifying the new auditors to be engaged. Serbidynamic shares didn't take the news well, the counter closing 10% lower at 53.5 cent with 372 million shares traded, making it the most active stock on Bursa Malaysia. Since the end of May, the counter has lost about 70% with over 3 billion in market capitalization wiped off. To recap, the relationship between Serba Dynamic and KPMG broke down over the past few weeks after the auditor highlighted discrepancies involving transactions to the tune of 4.54 billion ringgit. Serba Dynamic then announced that it would be taking legal action against KPMG, alleging that the audit firm had been negligent in its duties. Astro Malaysia Holdings announced that it will be bringing Netflix's streaming services to Astro's platform in the coming months. This confirms a report by The Edge that the partnership between the two groups would be unveiled this week. In a statement, Astro says its customers will be able to enjoy seamless access to Netflix on their connected Ultra boxes first at launch and on connected Ulti boxes in the coming months. With this partnership, Astro and Netflix customers in Malaysia can experience the convenience of having Netflix on on their Astro subscription, essentially bundling all the payment in a single bill. However, pricing has yet to be revealed. Astro CEO Henry Tan says this partnership with Netflix consolidates its position as a leading provider of entertainment services in the country. Netflix VP for Business Development APAC Tony Zamrachowski says he is thrilled with its partnership with Astro, saying that it allows Netflix to bring a world-class multi-device entertainment experience to more Malaysians. This comes hot on the heels of Astro's partnership with Walt Disney Co. to launch the Disney Plus Hotstar streaming platform in Malaysia earlier this month. It was a fairly solid second quarter in terms of earnings for the two companies in the Eco World Group. Eco World Development Group saw its second quarter net profit jump 172% to 42.3 million, mostly on the back of strong sales during the quarter. Revenue improved 22% to 420.5 million. For the first half of FY21, net profit doubled to 104.8 million, while revenue grew by 5% to 927.8 million. It declared an interim dividend of of two cent per share. EWD President and CEO Datuk Chang Kim Wa notes that the group has already secured 88% of its sales target within the first seven months. Although he admits that the FMCO will result in some delays, he says he takes comfort in the high level of sales already locked in. EcoWorld International posted a net profit of 11.3 million for the quarter, nearly 44% lower than the previous year due to higher finance costs, administrative and general expenses, and marketing expenses. Revenue, however, made a massive leap to 107.6 million from 113,000 a year ago, underpinned by its West Village and Yara One projects. EWI declared a special dividend of 5 cents per share. For the first half, EWI's net profit almost tripled to 67.3 million, while revenue soared to 410.8 million from 164,000 a year ago. Looking ahead, EWI President and CEO Datuk Tio Leong Seng says that the group is hopeful that the sales performance will improve in the coming quarters as rollout of vaccination programs continue in many markets which it has a presence and it will enable physical marketing activities to be carried out. Gamuda's third quarter net profits skyrocketed 253% to 141.8 million as the pace of construction and property projects and traffic on the expressways returned to pre-MCO levels. Revenue for the quarter also leapt 77% to 971.2 million, helped by higher property sales. However, no dividend was declared for the quarter. Moving forward, the group anticipates that FY21's performance will be driven by overseas property sales 
sales in Vietnam and Singapore and continued progress on the MRT Putrajaya line. Gamuda says its resilience is underpinned by its construction order book of 4.9 billion and unbuilt property sales of 4 billion, which will see the group through the next two years. Gamuda also highlights its recently launched Green Plan, a comprehensive roadmap that charts tangible goals based on environmental, social and governance dimensions, with one of the aims being reducing greenhouse gas emission intensity by 30% in 2025 and by 45% in 2030. The government has approved a manufacturer's licence and incentives under the National Economic Recovery Plan, or Banjana, for Risen Energy Co., with a total investment of 42.2 billion ringgit. This is for the design, development and manufacturing of solar cells and solar modules in Malaysia. PM Tan Sri Mudin Yassin says the investment, which spans 15 years from 2021 to 2035, is expected to generate 3,000 jobs, Bernama reports. In a post on his official Facebook, Muhyiddin says that the company will also collaborate with local universities in conducting research and development. Muhyiddin says the presence of Risen Solar would make Malaysia an integrated production hub for solar products. He adds that there are several global solar manufacturers such as Jinko Solar, Longi Solar, JA Solar, Hanwha Q-Cell, Fur Solar and Sun Power operating in Malaysia.